Hello, hello, D class. I am here with my friends. Oh wait, hold on, it's doing that thing again. Oh no! In traffic. Wait, hold on. Oh, wait, hold on. Does it work now? Hey, it works now. They, they can, they can see us. Yay! Yay. I was seeing with my friends, Doctor Rattler, High Priest of the Teleoilet, and Penguin Lesbian. You could call me by my actual name. <laughs> no. It's like you're in a casual situation with someone who just so happens to be a cardinal. All <laughs> right, so we've got we've got uh Jerry, uh we've we've got uh the Dragon Lord and we've got Cardinal. <laughs> like, bitch, I have a name. <laughs> no, no, no. You are obviously, your legal name has obviously been changed to High Priest of Telioilet. I'm going to harm you. <laughs> or to so smell like there, Gulag. Hatchet, Hatchet, there is no way that you could hurt me in a way that matters. You're a fungus? Actually, that <laughs> track. Anyway, we ready? Right. Mm -hmm. SCP-1238. It's a species of deep sea fish with no current taxonomic classification, morphologically similar to the Antarctic toothfish. SCP-1238 resides principally in deep waters in the northern Pacific Ocean along the northwestern American and western Canadian coastlines. Adult SCP-1238 specimens measure on average 1.4 meters in length and weigh 100 tons. 110 kilograms. SCP-1238 is not suitable for human consumption due to the large concentrations of toxic minerals consumed by the fish, and are not currently fished for in any significant qu quantity or exploited by human industry for any significant purpose. During most of its life cycle, SCP-1238 specimens subsist primarily on a diet of smaller fish and other small aquatic animals. During spawning season, which lasts from approximately early April to mid-July each year, the secondary digestive tract of mature SCP-1238 specimens be become active, allowing the fish to digest and metabolize inorganic minerals and metals, particularly deposits of metamorphic rock located below a region of the northwestern United States and southwestern Canada designated the Gold Zone. During spawning season, SCP-1238 will gather en masse at specific sites along the ocean floor and begin a process of tunneling under and through the continental shelf, widening and expanding the tunnel as a result of their consuming and existing the existing rock. During spawning season, an adult SCP-1238 fish can consume and metabolize parsley 120% of its body mass and minerals within a 24-hour period. SP-1238 produces a little water matter during the stage. Volume of weight excreted is approximately 10% of that consumed. Tunnels produced by SP-1238 in this manner become the spawning grounds in which SP-1238 eggs are laid and fertilized. A female SP-1238 Fish is capable of laying up to 40,000 eggs each within a season, of which approximately 25 to 35% will survive to adulthood under the current conditions. SP 1238 hatchings reach maturity after approximately 10 years and have been documented to live to approximately 35 years in the wild. SP 1238 specimens almost always return to the tunnel in which they were born in in order to spawn with tens of thousands of individual specimens involved in a digging a single tunnel. SP-1238 will continue to expand on, on a specific tunnel, occasionally forming branching tunnels until natural phenomena causes the tunnel to collapse. Population growth results in excessive competition for resources or a food supply becomes inadequate. Individual SP-1238 tunnels have been documented to extend as far as redacted kilometers from the starting point and as deep as redacted kilometers below, below sea level.
Okay. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so maybe it's because I'm distracted by game, but did did it say anything about them being harmful to anyone? Well, they're constantly just... constantly digging underneath the continental shelf and burrowing further and further and further in. Mm -hmm. That does seem like a problem. Are they quick at it though? That, that that's they can go 120% of their own body mass th uh, through that shelf in within 24 hours. I, I do the math. Because <laughs> I don't know mm -hmm. how much that is. Well, we would kind of need to know their body mass. I, I, oh, 1.4 meters in length and weigh 100 to 110 kilograms. That's a big fish. So, probably world ending. If the well, not world ending, but like continental, maybe world ending. I don't know. I depends on like hold on, what, what we what count you. as world ending. Ending. I don't see how they're going to cause any harm. Like the worst, like the worst case scenario I can think of is they cause some earthquakes. But oh, even wait. then, like if hold they on. just. They, there's something from the O5. I didn't okay. see it because it was like really bright red. Oh, uh, red okay. Stand out, not blend in. Basically, uh, it shows a map. It says map of northwestern United States and western Canada depicting approximately projected flooding as a result of events six three eight mu three four. Global sea level adjusted as a result of flooding not represented, and. It looks like most of California and everything. Hold on, I can, I can send a picture. Hold on. Is Florida safe? It's near, it's near Canada, United States area. So Florida safe? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Florida, doesn't Florida flood anyway? All right. Uh, go to stream planning. Shh. That's how much they believe the damage would be if they keep going at it. I Okay, so it's not as bad as I thought it was would be. Even then I don't I real I don't see Wait, okay, so are they living underneath? They're living around that area, but every time breeding season happens they dig these big ass tunnels until they collapse, and then go to ones that like don't collapse and lay eggs and fertilize the eggs. That's basically what they do. I guess I'm just I'm trying to wrap my head around how that makes sense. Like, okay, they they dig these tunnels. These tunnels collapse. Is it saying that those tunnels collapsing could somehow cause this flooding? I believe that's what it is, yeah. So it's then there... It's just sometimes it collapses. Oh wait, hold on. There's a paragraph under the map. Damage to these tunnels has resulted in an increasing number of sinkholes and other anomalous phenomena on the surface, including the alleged final sinkhole referred to as Mel's Hole. Peter Marlin indicates that the collapse of one of the larger tunnels or a major earthquake resulting along the redacted or redacted fault lines could potentially cause a chain reaction, ultimately resulting in a complete collapse of the tunnel network. The partial collapse of the continental shelf and a permanent flooding of a large area of the gold zone by the Pacific Ocean to depths to up to redacted meters. If SP-1238 timeline continues to accelerate at current rates, our models predict a high probability of event 638MU-4 occurring no later than 20 redacted. Even if all SP-1238 timeline were to cease immediately, a high probability remains of event 638MU-34 occurring within the next redacted years. Okay, so now, okay. So it's not that 
just the tunnels that they build occasionally collapse and cost us. It's the fact that if if something causes all of the tunnels to yeah. collapse. Okay. And it, it will leave devastating effects. Yeah. What well, like that needs to be fishing season on them soon? Well, seeing what how they're people? they eat toxic shit, no no one can eat them. Well, yeah, just because you fish them doesn't mean you eat them. There are lots of uh, things that are fished or hunted that can't be eaten that are done for ecological reasons. Like, well, I can't eat this, but... So you, you, are you saying the SCP Foundation needs to kill them? Make them neutralized? Yeah. yeah. It's not you the first time they did it. Huh? It's not the first time they've done it to an SCP. Well, At the yeah, same time, but... this is... At the same time, this is just animals doing what they do. Like, they're most very of the time, large. Like most of the time, to my knowledge, when, uh, like they purposely just kill off animals like that that they can't use otherwise, it's because it's an invasive species that's harming the ecosystem. These guys are just doing what they do, which. Is could lead to like, devastating effects if there was an earthquake. <laughs> yeah, I mean it could, but at the same time, guess I I can think of another animal that's led to devastating effects for the entire Earth. Does that mean that we kill all of said animal? You say humans? Yes. <laughs> just be, just because an animal can potentially cause harm doesn't mean that they should be killed off. I'm a large enough risk to humanity so, humanity to be killed. Where are we thinking of putting it? As far as like where it goes? I mean Yeah, I think it's fair to put it at continent considering that that's like or well country. Yeah. It's gonna it's like it's like in between I would like, say city and continent country. since most of the continent would go under if if the worst happened. Yeah, well, yeah, but it's... like given the graph that they're showing, like it's just it's just taking a chunk out of north out of North America. And partially in Canada Canada. That's North America is the continent. Oh. I I, I thought I I thought I only heard America and I was like, yeah, and no. <laughs> Yeah, so like I, I think it would belong somewhere between city and country. And since it's yeah. really big, I would put it in country. Wait, where did I put it? I have, <laughs> okay. I have a question. Global fleet. By the way, real quick. Result of flooding not mm -hmm. represented. That means it wouldn't just be that that continent affected. It would be all the continents affected. Well, yeah, but it's not going to destroy all of the continents. No, like, but it's going to destroy more than a continent's worth of landmass. I don't, I don't follow that. Well, I don't there's see how a lot it could of lead areas to in different continents that all it needs is a little more water raised to literally put everything underwater. Okay, this isn't like these things aren't actually raising the water levels. Like that, that's just sounding like global warming. I swear, if global warming is one of the key to class of CPs, it may as well be. <laughs> like, like this, this isn't causing sea levels to rise. It's just there's this particular rock eating fish that lives in this particular region that burrows and if those burrows collapse a lot of flooding is going to happen because a large area of land collapses like they're, they're fish they're not going anywhere super super quickly and they specifically live in a very particular environment the words that made me think that might affect this the sea levels was uh, global sea level adjustment as a result of flooding not represented. Well, yeah, but that would imply that the sea level of the Earth goes down. 
because an area that wasn't previously covered in water is now spontaneously a big ass hole where water flows into. Hey, Hatchet, I want to tell you something. I decided mm -hmm. to look up if global warming's an SCP. I guess it is. It has not been created yet. Ah. Uh, <gasps> so it needs to get on that. I, think, I mean, I feel right like now the global warming. I mean, right now the theme is human nature. That'd be pretty oh. good chance. Or just nature in general, like all forms just of nature. Just nature in general. Yeah, all forms of nature. Does that mean I could make a penguin and SCP? There's a couple of those. And yes, you could. But yeah, no, I, I, I'm sticking with my uh, country verdict. I'm guessing Penguin did not know there are Penguin SCP. No. <laughs> so We our... need to do a Penguin stream. Uh, the... As a Penguin and P, uh, SCP stream. By the way, Bright, you haven't started streaming in Discord. Oh, I thought you. I have been started streaming in general. I was like, oh. <laughs> no, you started you streaming. I know to. I know to reload. Fucking, push. It's stupid and doesn't immediately pop up. Oh gosh, damn it! Hold on. What? Though, to be entirely clear, if I had my way, this fish would just be in spood tier because it's a, it, they're, they're just doing their thing. They're just eating the rocks. Hmm. The oh, yeah, technically you could destroy a country. We could also put it in spood tier. I feel I, like if spood was given the resources, spood could destroy a country. But what I'm meaning is like, the damage that they cause is a byproduct of them just doing their thing. They're like they they aren't malevolent. Guys, yeah, like th these guys aren't malevolent. They're they're just fish. They're just doing their thing. For now. Okay. I couldn't see my mouse the entire time because I had one I had multiple Google phones open. Nah. So now I should be able to see my mouse. Yeah, I can see my mouse. Yay. I hate that it does that. Oh, so I, oh. I just noticed, Penguin, that you changed your Discord icon to be Pengu. Wait, you want to know what's funny? If I keep talking, you want to see what happens oh, to the Pengu? Damn it. I hate it. God damn it. <laughs> Wait, no, 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 no. If what? I just keep talking like this, watch, 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 watch. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> what? I mean, you could have just clicked on my profile and it would have kept playing the animation, but... <laughs> <laughs> Why does it do that? That's a pain. The, the worst part is, is, I know the sound. Yeah, the worst part is, is I know the sound that goes with the animation. And I just, I can hear the music that plays when the face shows up. <laughs> Alright, you ready? Uh, the music that plays is specifically from... Uh, one of the uh, Dark Souls games. You ready for the next SCP? Yep. Sure. All right. SCP-1262 is a mass roughly 30 centimeters in diameter that is made up of, of a green plant matter capable of, of highly accelerated growth when left in the presence of light, moisture, or organic tissue. Its surface area is composed of a dense covering of thin roots. These roots can spread outwards by growth and movement at a rate of 0 0.22 meters per second. SCP-1262's roots can reach up to a kilometer in length in order to seek water and mineral nourishment from the surrounding environment or from other living organisms. SCP-1262 has a rapid regenerative ability which makes it difficult to eradicate. SCP-1262 also has an innate resistance to most types of radiation, extreme temperatures, and extreme pressures. However, extreme temperature or large amounts of aggressive herbicides seem to be the most effective suppression methods. Currently, there is no known method to fully exterminate SCP-1262. If left unchecked, SCP-1262 will grow to a form uh, complex structures. These structures are supported by hardened cellulose fiber and lignin wax, but 
formed in hexagonal patterns. These structures also include defensive slash offensive, uh, offensive biological mechanic mechanisms that range anywhere from pneumatically discharged calcium carbonate fleshites to hallucinogenic fume releasing pods. Inside these structures, SV1262 is able to produce many independently functioning organic systems for capturing and converting the ambient environment on an enormous scale. And yeah. And they've got some incidents. Oh. If you would like. Murder incidents? Tell us. Oh my gosh, I... one was on my birthday. Hell yeah. Right. What did you do? Is this a giant? Is this well, a the year's different? Like really bad. The year's different, but yeah, it was a little different. Anyway, April twelfth, twenty ten. Doctor Redacted and his assistant were collecting samples on the. Okay, I want to stop for a second because I want to ask how the fuck do I say this without butchering it? I'm typing it in stream planning. That's the name they gave. Uh, it looks like someone just oh. hit their head with, on a keyboard. <laughs> what? How do um, I say that? Keyboard hey, smash. German. I mean, it probably is German, but... Hey, Jeff, y'all... Uh... I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's... I was thinking... With, okay, with refer, that to amount them, of... refer to them as E15. E15? What the fuck is that? Yeah, I looked up the thing, and apparently it's like an ice cap in Iceland that also goes by E15, so just call them E15. Well, okay, I guess it has a second name. That makes it easier. Oh. oh. Wait, wait. What was that? Oh. Can I select slow? A flat lie yokel. Yeah, that's that's uh that's Scandinavian. Uh, yes. I yes, said it was from Iceland. It, it literally means ice cap. Okay. So oh, dragon is not wrong. That's what the ice cap's name is. Yeah, as, ice as cap. Always. Yeah, its name is ice cap. All right. As I had been trying to friggin' say. Don't believe me. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, Hatchet. No, I was, I was, I was saying it was likely a Nordic name. Oh wait, I just see what's next to that word. It says ice cap in Iceland. <laughs> Good job, right? <laughs> anyway, let's get back to reading the incident. Samples on the E15 ice cap in Iceland when they inadvertently unearthed SP1262. From the dense ice. Dr. Redacted asked his assistant to retrieve it. As the assistant came into physical contact with SCP 1262, he was quickly engulfed and absorbed by aggressive overgrowth, resulting in death within seconds. Dr. Redacted escaped back to his vehicle and reported to the local authorities. Local law enforcement arrived hours later to find a thick tree like structure growing. Three of the officers were entangled and absorbed by roots underneath them and Another was killed by toxic, toxic aerosol. The only surviving individual did not report the incident, but fled the country. Instead, where he was later detained overseas. SP-1262 grew substantially and virtually unnoticed for the next 12 hours. April 13, 2010. By 4 a.m., SP-1262 had grown into a hardened cellulose space structure covering almost 20,000 meters squared, with the three prominent towers roughly 100 meters tall. At the base, a collection of gaseous bladders, each inflating and deflating independently, were scattered around the center mass along the thick roots that penetrated deep into the ice. The structure was, <laughs> was processing ambient air and other nutrients into heated carbon monoxide, which was being exhaled out of the structure's towers as thick clouds. Two nearby towns evacuated after 50 people died from in inhal inhalation. By 12.30 p.m., two more towers had sprouted in 
and the entire structure had increased in size by 160%. SCP Foundation was then notified and a perimeter slash media blackout was established to protect civilians. Mobile Task Force Sigma-9, aka Valkyries, was called in with level 5 clearance to lay down suppressing fire around SCP-1262 using air-to-ground bunker busters with redacted warheads. April 14th, 2010. First volley of airstrike began at 1 a.m. and was successful in penetrating ice cap over the dormant volcano. SCP-1262 came trapped in the collapsing caldera for a short while. During that time, three aircraft were destroyed by SCP-1262. A second volley was aimed directly at the center mass of the structure. The subsequent explosions were able to destabilize the volcano underneath and to the point of triggering, triggering a violent eruption as planned. A final airstrike of bombing raids was made in the surrounding areas of the E-15 ice cap, effectively demolishing the towns of Redacted and Redacted, along with Redacted of Witnesses, Redacted Campsite. The entire site was closely monitored to ensure that it had been successfully incinerated in the eruption. All pu public knowledge of the incident was expunged and the airspace of 20 nearby centuries were subsequently closed off until further notice, until at atmosphere ash samples confirmed a complete neutralization. Redacted Flight redacted crashed into an isolated area of Greenland while traveling from Reykjavik, Iceland. Intercepted transmissions before the crash gave a strong indication that SV-1262 was involved. Upon further investigation of the wreckage, the tail section, which had broken off in mid-air, was found covered in SV-1262's overgrowth, still in the early stages of development. SV-1262 was quickly suppressed and had surrounding layers of growth stripped off. SV-1262 was then taken directly to Area 33 for indefinite storage. So this thing can cause a lot of damage. I guess my first thought is, is there any limit to its, uh, to its growth? No. Like this thing can just grow oh. indefinitely. As long as it gets its nutrients and water and everything, it can keep growing. Yeah, so okay, that's an ending. I doubt that it could cross bodies of water. It would probably very easily take over Iceland. Fair point. In other words, Iceland's toast, so country. Yeah. It... And it probably caused quite a few problems considering how much methane, or not methane, um, carbon monoxide it would be. Belching yeah. into the atmosphere. Pretty... Well, possibly world ending. I I don't think it'd be world ending, but mm. we're already destroying our atmosphere as we as we do it, Dragon. As we speak. Yep. Mm. Wait, what is Jerry's thoughts on the SCP? We didn't hear Jerry's thoughts. I don't think Jerry had any. Sorry, I missed the whole SCP because my <laughs> teeth are very sensitive right now. Ah. Uh, what? And I eat things with small little bits. Basically, it's a plant. As long as it gets its nutrients, it'll keep like growing, and it shoots out carbon monoxide. Oh. It is. It is currently in Iceland. Currently in Iceland. Well, you know what? Iceland may be its own on its own continental shelf thing, but well, I guess now nothing's on the continent shelf pretty soon. Oh yeah, and Jerry, uh, it's resistant to most types of radiation, extreme temperatures, and extreme pressures. Well, they're screwed. Yeah, I say country. country. Yeah, because because I I don't see this thing like it's probably like if it got to that size, it would probably negatively affect most places around it. But the only people that are really really screwed by this thing, all those Icelandic people, unfortunately. Think about what would happen if it, it was in China. 
Oh dear God! <laughs> Everything would be there. fucked because not only is okay. The thing is though, China isn't just on itself, like by itself, like uh, Iceland is. China. So is that means the several continents would be fucked. China is connected to Russia, and Russia yeah. is connected to many other places. Japan no. is its own little self, I think. Yeah, it's not. Oh, yeah, yeah, but it's like comparably a pretty small body of water between Japan and China to Iceland to anything else. Yeah. It also my raises per- several other questions my- on if it can, like, spread seeds onto, like, people's stuff if they were to travel out of the country. Uh, it just can- did. Yeah. In, in the instant report, it said it got... A part of it was on a plane, and it broke, forced the plane off, off of it. With the tail. Horrifying. Yeah, it did. It, it, it. Tracking. Uh oh. But, oh yeah, Cheery. One of its nutrients is organic things, like it'll attack people. That's why I said China. Because it would grow pretty quickly there. Technically, China doesn't have the most people in the world anymore. Oh, really? Yeah. Isn't it India? Yeah. Yeah, I, was gonna yeah, say. I would have to say that was honestly an inevitability with how they treat women. If you have next to no women in your country, eventually you're going to have a population dip and others will rise above you. Oh, so do they, do they no longer have the world's largest army? I have no idea. I'd imagine they still the have that. Right. So we're all in agreement with country because Iceland is basically fucked. Yeah. This would be much, <laughs> much worse if it showed up almost anywhere else. Except for maybe Siberia. Oh, there's also like raised the question, oh, like if, if, question if anyone would miss um, if, if anyone would miss Iceland. We're talking about thousands or millions of people dying. Wait, how many people live on Iceland? A lot. Why is the to pop- keep intruders like... away? It's green and alive. Yeah, it has some of the world's best honey on it. And Not to mention the volcano. Iceland, Iceland doesn't have millions. Uh, according to twenty twenty, Iceland only has like three hundred thousand. If and not like by now, probably four hundred thousand. Okay then. It, it a lot of them are probably dead. <laughs> not a lot of them, almost all of them. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> they are all. They have all been sacrificed to the plant. <laughs> so, if this plant took over Iceland, would they have to officially become part of Greenland? <laughs> what if it? Was, what if the plant was just? Was just upset about being in Iceland and not Greenland. <laughs> Which is ironic because the exact the, it is the exact opposite reason why Greenland was called Greenland. They yeah. called Iceland Iceland to get people to go there less. They called Greenland Greenland to get people to go there more, even though they're basically like j- just false advertising. Yeah. Just like America. Greenland, it's basically an island device. Yeah, like, like, it's, it, it's like almost nothing but I said that. Hmm. Like, I, I would, I think the best way to put it is Greenland is what Americans think of when, uh, they say Canada. <laughs> like thinking about super cold, constantly dark areas. That's Greenland. It's not just Canada. <laughs> Anyway, Greenland could be described as ice, like if the ice melted, is there at how much land is actually under it? I don't know. Yeah, see? And can can I eat Greenland? Is Greenland ed- edible? No. I, I want to eat no. some of I want my yeah. goal in life. My goal in life is to eat some of the snow. In Greenland, and only Greenland. I want to eat some oh of the my snow. Gosh. You're honey in the world, and you're like, 
No, I want to destroy it. Anyway. I want to eat only the purest of snow from Greenland. Anyway, the There's next no SCP. I feel like maybe maybe Antarctica would have better snow. Or Australia. The next SCP. Yep, anyway. I don't think Australia. Oh. Dragon Hush. Mm. Next SCP is SCP-1264. SCP-1264 is amalgamation of once the relict warships and various pieces of float sand slash chest sam that have been adhered together by organic secretions. The main body of SCP-1264 is made of five WW2 era, era warships that were used as target ships as part of the Operation Crossroads, a comic bomb test, performed at the Bikini Atoll in 1946. The following ships that made up of SCP-1264 were confirmed to have sunk after these tests. U USS Saratoga, uh, Lex uh, Lexington class aircraft character carrier. Nagato Nagato class dragnaut. Prince Eugen Admiral Hip Hipper class heavy cruiser. USS Lamson Mahan class destroyer. USS Apagon, Balo class submarine, various secretions of a yard oiler. Survey reports of the wreckage performed at the Bikini Atoll in 1954 showed a, a number of sunk ships missing from the lagoon. In response, the U.S. Navy built and sunk several dummy ships in their place in order to cover up any evidence of the missing original ships. The U.S. government then initiated Operation Castle under the guise of nuclear testing, but was actually intended for the purpose of creating su sufficient nuclear fallout as to make the Bikini Atoll area inhabitable. SV-1264 was first documented on January 30th, 1959, 56 kilometers south of Cape Farewell, Greenland, when it engaged and sunk the MS Hans Hedtoff during its maiden voyage. SCP-1264 shows a only moderate corrosion and damage in, in contraction of U.S. Navy records on individual ships. The centerpiece of SCP-1264 is an aircraft carrier with several large jib cranes attached to, to its deck. The other ships are fastened to the sides as a centerpiece by means of hardened secretions. All the ships are missing their su superstructure or coning towers. Other float sam and jet sam have been attached to fill in empty spaces between the ships and roughly make up 12% of the SCP's 1264's total mass. SCP-1264 is armed. SCP-1264 is armed with various pieces of artillery, or torpedoes, AA guns, and depth charges. However, only several pieces of artillery have ever been seen in use, which indicates that either the remaining are non-operational. Or are, or they are insufficient resources to operate them. SV-1264 spends most of its time underwater, as a submersible above the water. SV-1264 is capable of speeds up to 31 knots. SV-1264 is maintained by a crew that has been designated SV-1264-A. Each fit inside a U.S. Navy standard rubber driving dress and are equipped with Mark V diving helmet and weighing boots. SV-1264-A are headless humanoid entities closely related to sea cucumbers. SCP-1264-A are also connected by a flexible arterial cord through 90 meters long that is, turn, that is in turn connected to SV-1264's interior. SV-1264-A displays a deep understanding of 1264's mechanical and electrical systems. SV-1264-A officially performs repairs and maintenance with what is available within their designated areas. SV-1264-A are characteristically slow, obstinate, and exhibit no real intelligence of their own. SV-1264-A also secrete a strong adhesive through their gloves that act as waterproof salient binder, filler, and cement in order to maintain the structural integrity and buoyancy of SV-1264. All of 
SV1264 steerage and weapon systems are operated by SV1264-A. In turn, SV1264-A is commanded by a single entity designated SCP-1264-1. SCP-1264-1's appearance is unknown, and the only physical evidence of SCP-1264-1's existence are the arterial cores that connect SCP-1264-A to the ship's interior. These cords are lined with strands of neural tissue that do not originate from SCP-1264-A. This indicates that SCP-1264-A is directly connected to a separate biological entity, or that SCP-1264-1 is actually a the collective consciousness of SV1264-A. SV1264-1 has proven on numerous occasions to be a hostile, hostile and skillful tactician of naval warfare. SV1264-1 has been reported in some cases to transmit radio signals via ELF radio. To date, SV1264-1 has engaged redacted civilian and military vehicles and has sunk redacted of them. Though SV-1264-1 has shown a preference of for passenger ships over other vessels. After the destruction of a vessel, SV-1264-A will then throw fishing nets on top of the survivors floating in the water. These nets are attached to, to the hull of the sinking vessel or to anchor so that it will drag down the net and its contents. Post-incident recovery teams who use submersibles are unable to locate any corpses underwater after they are dragged to the bottom. In Redacted, SV-1264 was involved in a protracted engagement with MTF Tau-11, aka can openers, and was effectively suppressed. In its impaired condition, SV-1264 was then towed out under armed escort to its current containment area for indefinite detainment. Oh, hello, Gen Apple. Also, yeah, that's SCP-1264. Hmm. I was very focused on not getting shot by the police. Uh, I missed a lot of that. It's a collection of a bunch of U.S. ships. They were used in, in the testing of Bikini Atoll. You know what that is. Well, I know what that is. I don't know what that is. It's the origin of Bikini Bottom. Oh. Uh... It was uh, one of the most notable nuclear disasters in more recent history. Yep. And then the U.S. created this SAP. Oh, wait, we lost Jerry. Yeah, I you, told you that. I, I said we lost a snake. Oh. How did you? Jerry says in what stream you... planning, I'm going to go use the bathroom. Leaves. The audible sound goes off. I didn't get a child... sound. Wait, what? How? I don't know. I think it's oh, because uh, Break is probably in streamer mode. Uh, uh, well, um... All that, all that said, uh, I I missed pretty much anything that has to do with like how much danger it poses to people. Well, it constantly goes after ships, but its favorite kind is passenger ships. And basically, when it starts singing one, it throws a net over it so nothing can go up, no life. Mm. I see. And they think there's a hive mind in there because there's a bunch of creatures. Hold on, let me see what they resemble. Uh, da, da, da. They they're each fit with it, and they each fit inside a U.S. Navy standard rubber dry, diving dress and are equipped with a Mark V diving helmet and weighted boots. SCP-1264-A are headless humanoid entities closely related to sea cucumbers. Yeah. I'm so, uh, I'd can, say certain um, groups. Yeah. Yeah. Like as long as you're not on a certain type of ship, you're fine. 
Yeah, just no, don't, they just, just don't attack drive. all ships they see. It's just they, they like passenger ships more. <laughs> In other words, just don't take a visit. Just don't don't take a ride to Bikini Atoll and go. Oh no, they've been going to other it... places. Like it. Oh, it okay, it it's, it's been spotted in Greenland. <laughs> that's that's it's... that's on the other side of the goddamn planet. Okay. <laughs> Why is it always Greenland and Iceland that are being <laughs> fucked over? Someone, someone who keeps writing these articles really does not like those two countries. <laughs> If we just read an SCP about Iceland and now <laughs> we're going to Greenland. Ah, uh, yes. I mean, they are neighbors. What the fuck is sugar alcohol? What? Alcohol that has something to do with sugar, maybe? Why does gum have sugar alcohol? I don't know. Either way, yeah, certain groups, because like mm. it's only going after people and ships. Just don't go on a ship. Yeah, yeah. Don't, just don't be a person on a ship. Yeah. Yeah, they, they the last encounter it had with a ship was it going after an MTF team. <laughs> like yeah. that was gonna do good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The next SCP is the Silent Bandit, or also known as SCP-1275. SCP-1275 is a fluid, amorphous entity of variable volume, shape, color, and opacity. Absurd volumes of material composing the entity have ranged from one centimeter cubed max minimum to a maximum of thirty meters cubed. It is effective by, affected by gravity and cannot pass through solid materials, yet registers no weight on instru instruments regardless of its current size. Parts separated from the main body appear to flow extra-dimensionally back to it, making sample tests unfeasible. It is not chemically re reactive, shows no changes with variations in temperature, it is not electrically conductive and returns no tactical sensation. Due to these properties, SCP-1275 is theorized not to exist fully within the material world. The entity is capable of forming itself into any shape, including flattening to 0 0.01 mil millimeters thickness, spooling into a threaded form, or taking on the shape, color, or opacity of objects around it. If free, it attempts to envelop objects such as classified documents, SCP artifacts, or Foundation personnel. Upon developing an object, it will turn op opaque and rapidly decrease in size, while the object env enveloped will disappear from, it from the inside. On occasion, it will attempt to disgorge explosives, weaponry, anomalous objects, and hostile agents in order to breach its containment. Observed behavior patterns indicate it to be intelligent and or controlled by outside intelligence. It is proven capable of breaching all but the most stringent of security measures, pressuring its way through minor flaws and seals thought to be in air and or watertight, moving through its air ducts and electrical systems under carpet or tile or flowing slowly through loose materials such as dirt or sand. It attempts to avoid observation by blending in with its surroundings and remaining motionless. If noticed, it will move quickly and attempt to envelop personnel before they can raise an alarm. Objects, have per objects and personnel enveloped were originally believed to be consumed, digested, and converted into energy. However, its capacity for flowing back to, its to it itself when separated and the emergence of objects suggests that it may have a second section elsewhere in the world that it moves portions of itself between. This would account for its fluctuations in volume and the disappearance of objects from within it. If this is the case, then the entity appears unable to pull the portion of itself held by the Foundation through the, others, through the other side. It is theorized that either this is the primary half, or that it naturally has a divided existence. 
Attempts to initially send equipment back through SB-1275 have failed. Objects the entity that does not wish to transport remain, even if forcefully inserted. Evidence strongly suggests that the entity sides with or is controlled by a hostile organization and that they are attempting to retrieve it. Due to the potential for theft of SB artifacts and personnel, this is to be prevented by any means necessary. So this is just a piece of shit that's attacking the Foundation. It's just amorphous blob goo that doesn't like the SCP Foundation. How oh, unfortunate. Honestly, that's reasonable. Mm -hmm. So hey, I, guess, I... Oh, also, hey, Adirna. Yeah, hey, Adirna. Oh. Adirna! Oh, right. you, you left the Foundation. What do you mean? Oh, uh, yeah, I did leave the Foundation. But well, it's not with a serpent's hand. Chaos Insurgency, most likely. Or the GOC. In a way, um, in terms of, uh, like, its danger level, uh, I, I guess my biggest issue is that there's just so many goddamn unknowns. Like, it, it doesn't affect things super heavily, except for specifically things that have to do with the SCP Foundation. Now, does that mean that it intends to, say, do something like uh, release dangerous SCPs or get them into the hands of people who would try to use them? Wait, or hold on. Responsible? I was looking at the instant reports. Hold on. Mm -hmm. uh, March... 2nd, 2005, hostile agents armed with anomalous weaponry emerged from within SB-1275 and rapidly attempted to set up a base of operations within the containment cell. An attack was in initiated against Foundation personnel. Containment on SB-1275 was breached shortly thereafter. Mobile task forces were sent in to engage and recover the object. After a prolonged engagement, the enemy re agents retreated into SB-1275. So it's not just a, a glob uh, of goo; it's also a portal. Oh. Yeah, that much that much had been made clear. Either but way, who, what, who were those then? It does not say what enemy organization it is. It is unknown. So it could have literally been anyone. Could have been like a organization that was. Like trying to do it for good reasons through an organization that try to do it for bad reasons. I guess my 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 biggest thought on like this thing's actual reasonable danger level ultimately comes down to okay. us not knowing enough to say how dangerous it is. Yeah. Also, uh, this might help a bit, but how it was first discovered. In the recovery log, um, it, it has been found trying to get into SCP-140's containment, which is a keter, and it's mm. the Chronicle of Davis. I do not know that one. Basically, it's a book uh, of satanic writing or something like that, and it and it slowly, and it's been kills people who reads it as well as it mentally breaks people. Hmm. It's not a book <laughs> that should be taken. And it's also been uh, the result of loss of multiple SCPs in the recovery log. Hmm. When they found it. So multiple SCPs are gone. And we have no idea what the numbers are because they're redacted. So they could be so, Keter, since it's going after a Keter. Well, it could also not know what SCPs they are. That's true, but if it's intentionally going after a Keter, that's a problem. Well, it, it was implied that it's either being controlled by some outside force or has some level of intelligence. So it right. seems likely that it is intentionally going after a Keter. Yeah. 
And that's the terrifying thought. Uh, that, that would be unless, like, it was trying to... This actually to sounds like... heavily like the Chaos Insurgency. Mm. Cause that's what they like to do. They like to literally cause as much destruction as possible to the Foundation. And what to do it more? Take their heaters and use them against them. Mm. Like it's... <sighs> but that's just a theory. We have no idea what enemy organization it is. Either way, the, the sheer fact that they're going after Keters, I think, is enough. Uh, I think that this logically could be ZK. Brought right. to its logical extreme. Oh, imagine if it found out what the phrase was of that uh, oh, phrase SCP. If it takes that, <laughs> we are well, fucked. I can't, well, it can't take a phrase, but yeah. Well, it, I think out. it's written down in a containment. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Why do we have that written down? <laughs> Get rid of it. Scrub all references of it. Um, I get to me. Well, they they could they could potentially just um just black it out and shit. Right, but they also just redact uh, it, like yeah. redact the fucking shit. Yeah, they also uh, you also have to mention this hatchet. The GOC is using that SCP as a weapon, so they also probably have it written down. <laughs> yeah, great. So it's not just the SCP Foundation who has it; this GOC too. <laughs> so if it goes to the GOC, oh my god. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, everything strength. is perfectly balanced, and I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that the GOC is probably like worse than the SCP Foundation with that shit. They're objectively worse, yeah. Mm. Yeah. But like, well, like worse with the like keeping stuff like safe and everything. <laughs> okay, here's the thing, uh, Aderna. Mm -hmm. They shot and killed a 12 year old because they can make objects invisible. Oh no no! I'm not I'm not talking about how bad they are as like an organization. <laughs> I'm taking okay. I'm talking how bad they are with organizing and yeah. stuff and everything. Considering like, the fact that the SCP Foundation is bad at it, but I bet they're worse. It's like <laughs> slightly bad at it. They're I guess they're okay at it. They're not they're not good at it. They do a decent job for a fictional organization that's entirely run by randos on the internet. Yeah. So, what are we thinking of placing this piece of shit? I, uh, I think I'm going to stick to it. I'm going to say a ZK. When I, I saw this picture of it, I thought, oh, this is probably just going to be an only one. Except, you know, no, it's a major piece of shit. <laughs> this gelatinous blob very well could destroy the universe. <laughs> so it's just Kirby, but an out. SCP? Shut the fuck up. You know, I Am hate I how... I hate how accurate that statement was, so fuck you. <laughs> Egg fucking exactly fuck you. Fucking going around eating everything, god dang it. Stupid it's child. It's Corby. Oh, this... Fuck do you play Corby Dream? This SCP actually has a... a sad nickname. Mm. It's called... Its nickname mm. is The Sad Man. See. Anyway. Or B. SCP twelve. Oh, what what is it? Or I was gonna say I need to go use the bathroom and get some coffee. Okay, hold on.